Good evening, everyone. I'd like to bring the June two, uh, 20th, 2018 meeting of the Interborough Board of School Directors to order. May we have a roll call, please, Ms. Caldwell? Mr. Goldsboro? Here. Ms. Verricchio? Ms. Joseph? Here. Bernauer? Here. Mr. Harris? Mr. Evans? Here. Mr. Chavone? Here. Mr. Phelps? Here. Mr. Evans, could we have the invocation and the pledge, please? <clears throat> Heavenly Father, please hear our prayer. Bless all schools, colleges, especially the Interbar School District, and grant to this board in their deliberations this evening spirit of wisdom, truth, and knowledge. What is undertaken always be done in charity and in peace. What we do might be for the benefit of others. All this we ask in your name. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, do we have any uh, public comment, Mr. Evans? Yes, Mrs. Phyllis Floyd. Phyllis Floyd, 604 14th Avenue, Prospect Park, 11.21. Um, There's uh, three science teachers that are leaving, which is sad to hear. Um, I was wondering if anybody knows how many years uh, they were employed by Annabar, that they're resigning. If I'm not mistaken, Ms. Boyd, none of them were more than 10 years. None were more than Have that in front of you. Okay, because I thought the one was definitely more than 10 years. Um, then we go to motion 12.1. Um, uh, and 12.2. I noticed these individuals have been with the district for five years, which if I'm correct, that qualifies them for uh, retirement benefits. Whatever the state has in place, Mrs. Floyd, it, as far as retirement, it was whatever they're know. entitled to based on the state right and I believe it's five years if you work with the uh, school district for five years that entitles you to retirement benefits okay it's just something that I'm noticing is like becoming somewhat of a habit get a job at any school district not just here work five years and you collect a, a retirement. I mean, I find that interesting. And I mentioned the other night about um, the administrative assistant uh, for pupil education being transferred or promoted into a payroll specialist job. And in conversation, it came out that the present payroll specialist is not retiring and no one seemed to know how much longer she's going to be working because apparently she needs to transition this individual or train this individual. So we have a person that's going to be in training for $44,000, an increase of, a, um, I want to say, approximately uh, 10000 or more, in uh, income plus 50 some thousand plus that is for the present clerk so we're going to be paying almost close or around a hundred thousand dollars for the payroll person I mean does this individual have any kind of accounting or payroll experience or anything that um, 
I understand transition, but the impression I got the other night from what responses I was getting, it's going to be, it's going to be for a while. And that's a lot of money for a person that's in training. So um, I didn't know if this job was advertised to see if we had someone that would be uh, have experience and would need as long of a transition or training period. Um, I just I don't understand it, and the answers I got, the responses I got from Mr. Phelps, was not really conclusive of any of this. And it's something that I really think that that much money, and we're strapped, the budget's going up 2.95%, nine, and uh, I, I just don't understand. It's like whenever I hear, um, oh, we're going to be saving money, I, I kind of shudder because it's rare that we save. It's rare that we save because whatever we save is almost immediately spent, just like the fund balance, the budget, and the surplus that we're going to have, which shows here $81,000, is that correct? Okay. There's already plans to spend it. When? I don't know. Will it be this year? Possibly, uh, if certain individuals have their way. And we were told by the auditors, our fund balance is very, very important. And the audit report stated and warned that we needed to get our fund balance up because it affects our credit, our credit rating. It might not yet, but it will. Not to mention if we have an emergency, where are we going to get the money? So looking at that 81000 that looks wonderful, but it's going to be spent. It's already earmarked. Maybe not officially. It wasn't voted on, but it's, it's going to be used up. And um, I'm just really concerned about, you know, 2.95, okay, instead of 3, and we could go to 3.2, and the difference is minimal from each bracket, but the savings or the surplus is a lot more that would help our fund balance. And I understand that we're, I'll call it the shell game, we're taking, or shuffle, we're taking committed um, uh, fund balance money and moving it up into the operational part of the budget. And it may be legal, but who are we fooling? The money's still going to be coming, you know, <laughs> whether it's out of this pocket or this pocket, the money is still going to be spent. And going back to our auditors, are we trying to fool them? Do you think they're stupid as far as uh, the money's up in the operating budget and makes the fund balance look larger, but still not large enough? So those points of the budget, I really wish um, the board as a whole, the finance director, the president, I, um, not finance director, the finance chair, I just wish that these points were taken more seriously into consideration because I, I we're going to be in trouble. If not this year, next year, we're going to be in trouble. And what I said about savings, yeah, one year we laid off about a million dollars worth of uh, employees. And uh, by September, Mrs. which... Mrs. Floyd, I, I, I don't want to rush you, but you're well over five minutes. If you could wrap it up, I would. Thank, thank you. Um, the million dollars that was saved for budgetary purposes for the state report 
okay? Come September, just about everybody was brought back and we were back in the hole again. So that's why I say I shudder when the comment, there will be a savings. It gets spent almost immediately. Thank you. Thank you for your thoughts, Ms. Any other uh, public comment, Mr. Evans? Yes, Mr. Zardi Doby. <coughs> Zerdy Doby Pinnicum. I'd just like to recognize uh, District Judge Lippert. Uh, number three, when Mrs. Varecchio was uh, sworn in and Mr. Goldsboro, uh, what is going on with this process? Uh, is there more than one person who is going to be nominated? Because this doesn't seem like the normal course of, a, of, of procedures for a, a school board representative seeking a seat. What, why is this? Is there, well, I guess the question is, is there more than one person going to be nominated? We don't know that. We Pardon? The, I said we do not know that, sir, at this time, but there are three candidates. Okay. So... It really doesn't make very much sense because in the past, if you've had multiple candidates, you've uh, discussed it, I guess, in an executive session, which is appropriate, and then you've decided on which one that would become a school board director. So I'm, I'm just a little bit questioning why this is in such done in this manner, and you don't have an explanation. So number 10, which is the budget. You are proposing to increase the mill, uh, millage by 2.95%, and I'm protesting that increase. There is no need for that increase of that amount. Uh, it should be, if you're going to have any increase, it's only 0.95%. And once again, the issue is, for me, with the airport agreement that in which you are giving away $800,000 every single year since uh, September the 1st of 2015. You have lost more than $2 million in revenue by not going forward to adjust that tax guaranteed payment. I'm going to give you this past Friday, June the 15th, there was a sheriff's sale held in the Delaware County Council Room. There are approximately 90 properties listed here. 10 of them are within the Interboro School District. 10. And there are 14, approximately, I think there are 14 school districts in, the, uh, in Delaware County. 10 are in the Interboro School District were listed for sheriff's sale. So I don't know, this, you know, each of these are different circumstances for the people uh, losing, that may lose their property. So you're continuing to raise our taxes and not making any effort to recover that money. Last month, my representative, Ms. Bernauer, said that she had read the document and stated that the council, the solicitor, had advised them or her that it would not not to go forward, that there was nothing you could do about it. Mr. Evans also stated that the solicitor, and that it would not be appropriate to go forward at the time. You also stated that, it would, that there are, would be associated solicitor costs. Uh, you have no, nothing could be further from the truth with regards to that. The document was reviewed by a, and signed off on by a county judge. So that route of suing them, if that's what you were indicating, is not what is called for. The only thing that you can do, because you wouldn't win the court case anyway. So your lack of either understanding of that and not being honest and truthful about the characterization of what 
you are being asked to do with that agreement. So, once again, I went to the Delaware County Council meeting this morning, and I brought this issue up with them. And I asked them to revisit their distribution of that fixed payment to readjust it according to the millage rate. And uh, Representative Council Member Zydek and Madden are going to review the document, and hopefully they will come to a logical conclusion to help the Interborough School District and its children with their education fund. This past Monday, Pennycombe Township held their meeting. And I, again, I brought that issue up, and I asked my representative, Commissioner Dennis Arthur, to introduce a motion to readjust payment of that. And they just sat there. There was no response from them. Which can only be described as an attitude of greed and not willing to adjust that. And your response to not going forward is something else. And so I object to you raising our taxes and allowing money to go forward and losing it at the rate of $2,000 a day, $800,000 every single year for the next 20 years, starting in, in 2015. And thank you. Thank you, Mr. Doby. Appreciate your thoughts. Are there any other public comment, Mr. Evans? Yes, Mr. Chris Kelly. Good evening, uh, Chris Kelly, Tinnicum. Uh, a couple things. First off, um, I wanted to agree with uh, Mr. Doby on the airport uh, agreement. Uh, there was no reason to give any of that money to the county. It should have stayed within the district. Understand why the board a reason for the county to get more money. It boggles my mind that the district didn't fight. Um, <clears throat> other question, I had another question on 17.4. Uh, uh, motion is the engagement letter for Major and Mastro. How much are we paying, paying them now per year? <clears throat> One five thousand. Okay. Okay. Thank you. And it, that hasn't actually increased in a while, has it? I think it was somewhere in the twenties for a long time. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> and finally, I just have something about um, motion number three. <clears throat> Again, as Mr. Doby stated, um, there were three candidates there able to attend the meeting and listen to the, the interview process and what the applicants had to say. Um, <clears throat> I thought when I, when I came up and I saw the agenda today, I was going to see three names and that each board member would be able to then state whoever they were going to vote for. That's, that's the way it should happen, so that it's open and it's transparent. Uh, I've obviously been on the board before, and I've seen some of the shenanigans that happen in Delaware County with not only this board, but with other entities within Delaware County. Um, and that's one of the biggest things, is it's not transparent, and you never know what's going on behind the scenes. So if all three people's, three people's names had been on here, it would have been a much more transparent, um, I guess, situation for you guys to handle. And it wouldn't have, I guess, the appearance of something happening behind closed doors. So that's, that's, that's the first thing I saw when I saw on the, the agenda, and I wasn't real happy about that. Um, but then the other thing was, um, I guess when I heard candidates the other night, uh, I was able to kind of make a quick choice about who I thought was the best person uh, just by listening to what they had to say, not even knowing the people um, that well. Um, 
and, and I guess that was one of the things when I, when I sat there and listened to it and I heard the backgrounds and I heard you know, what they were bringing to the table, this is an important thing. And I don't know if people understand that in the public, I hope they do, but this is an important position. Uh, you're dealing with our kids' futures and you're dealing with something else, which is budgets and taxpayer money. So <laughs> it's super important you get the right person in here. And I think the choice is pretty simple. I hope that the Tinicum reps vote for the right person for the right reason. Um, I brought it up <clears throat> in that interview, uh, in an interview session, where I said, you know, I, I would hope that one of the questions that comes from the board is basically a question about political affiliations and what you do in the community. So if you are like a committee person or a ward leader or whatever, that does kind of color your, um, I guess, outlook. And it could actually change the way some people think about you and vote yes or no on you. So I think that's something that in the future you guys should really put in place. So it is more transparent. So everyone knows who's coming to the table and why they're coming to the table. Um, <clears throat> and in light of that, just, I, just from the people that I heard and what I saw the other night, um, I think that Donna Franz is the best candidate for this position. Uh, when I was on the board, she was at multiple meetings. Uh, she was at work sessions. She was at committee meetings, finance committee meetings, all sorts of meetings because she was involved in the schools. She had a, a vested interest. Um, and I didn't think I saw that with the other two, uh, which is a shame. And I didn't think I saw the same kind of, um, <clears throat> I guess, joy for the district that she has. She's willing to volunteer. She's done it for years. And <clears throat> I think that's one of the most important things, that you're, you're here for the right reason. You don't care about anything else. You're here for the kids. When I, when I ran for office, and actually got on the board, that's the reason why I, I did it. I got nothing out of it. And like you said, Mr. Phelps, the other night, you know, it's an unpaid, it's an unpaid position. And it's not a, it, lots of times it's an unpleasant position because you're dealing with stuff that people don't want to deal with, like taxes. So you really want somebody that loves this district and loves the kids in it. And I think with the I guess the background that she has, the fact that she's been involved, she understands the district and some of the issues in the district, uh, and she's had many, many years of meetings um, that she would be the best fit for this. But, um, <clears throat> and, and then I guess the other big thing that I saw the other night, I wasn't able to, to attend the, um, <clears throat> the work session. But, I heard that two of the candidates left, and she's the only one that stayed. Um, that kind of annoyed me, because everybody knows that deals with, with school districts and budgets is that June is the most important month of the year. It's the most important meeting of the year, too. So I just think uh, it's an easy choice for everybody, and I hope that that Donna does get the position. Uh, and I really think that you, know, you should scrap motion three and actually put it up to a roll call vote with all three candidates able to be voted on. And that's it. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kelly, for your thoughts. Mr. Evans, is there any other public comment? No, sir. Okay. <clears throat> Uh, moving on to uh, number three, nominations to appoint as Board of Director for Glen Oldenboro, Region 3, Precinct 4, for the remainder of the term through November 2019. Call for nominations. I would like to nominate Christine Alonzo Lorenzo. I would like to nominate Mrs. Donna Franz.
Any other nominees? I'd like to make a motion to close nominations. Second. Uh, we will uh, vote for the uh, board director position. Uh, we will uh, vote on uh, Christine Alenzo first. Uh, <clears throat> this would be a roll call, Ms. Caldwell. Mr. Goldsboro? No. Ms. Fericchio? Yes. Ms. Joseph? Yes. Ms. Bernauer? No. Mr. Harris? Yes. Mr. Evans? No. Mr. Chavone? Yes. Mr. Phelps? Yes. Uh, we have uh, Christine is tied to three. The uh, the board representative uh, for Inver School District will be uh, Christine Alonzo. Alonzo Lorenzo. I'm sorry, Christine Alonzo Lorenzo. Christine, if you could uh, come down to the front with our uh, Judge Liphart. Yes, your family can come also.
Ms. Alonzo, let me be the first to congratulate you and welcome you to the board. Uh, we do appreciate your uh, stepping up and volunteering your time. Uh, Mr. Evans, moving on to number four. Motion 4.1, that the following minutes of the special meeting of the Interbar Board of School Directors held on May 21st, 2018 be approved. Second. Motion has been moved and seconded. Are there any questions or comments from the board? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries 9-0. Next motion. Motion 4.2, that the following minutes of the regular meeting of the Interborough Board of School Directors held on May 16th, 2018, be approved. Second. Motion has been moved and seconded. Are there any questions or comments from the board? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 9-0. And number five, uh, Ms. Goham, the solicitor's report. Thank you, Mr. Phelps. This month, our office has consulted with the school district on board policy and procedures, including those that are applicable to the election of new members, um, contract review, including, again, the airport matter, um, special education issues, student day-to-day -day consultation issues, including um, those involving uh, discipline of students. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Goham. Moving on to number six, Mr. Evans. Motion 6.1, that the treasurer's report for the month ending May 31st, 2018 be approved. Second. <clears throat> Motion has been moved and seconded. Are there any questions or comments from the board? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 9-0. Next motion, Mr. Evans. Motion 6.2, the fund disbursements in the amount of $3,992,754.43 be approved. Second. Motion has been moved and seconded. Are there any questions or comments from the board? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 9-0. Number seven, is there any correspondence, Mr. Evans? Yeah, we still have motion 6.3. I'm sorry. That's all right, sir. That the budget transfers for the fiscal year 2017-2018 be approved. Second. Motion has been moved and seconded. Are there any questions or comments from the board? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 9-0. Now correspondence, Mr. Yes, sir. Uh, to the Board of School Directors, dated June 20th, 2018, from the Interborough School, at the Interborough School District, 500 Washington Avenue, Prospect Park, 19076. Hello. On behalf of the IHS Home and School Association, I would like to con congratulate the winners of this year's Art Contest and Essay Scholarship Contest. There were 15 categories in the Art Contest, with a total of 45 winners. Too many to list here. Each and every one of the hundreds of pieces of art were amazing and an example of the great talent right here at the high school. The winner of the best in show category was Emily Long. One of her best pieces will be framed and perma permanently displayed at the high school. Emily plans to attend Villanova University in the fall to pursue her passion for art. I commend art teachers Pat Hay and Chris Slate for their ability to direct and bring out the best of Interborough's high school art students. The winner, winners of the essay contest were Taylor Berkheimer, Jordan Schreiber, Maria Marta Waluska, Cole Hebert, Tyler, I'm sorry, Tylee Alston, and Sam Collington. I would like to share just a couple of remarkable selections that highlight these students' perspective of the teachers. On the topic of your future plans and how Inner Burr has prepared you, Taylor Berkheimer wrote, in retrospect, I vividly recall one teacher in particular, my first grade teacher, Ms. Kovach, who always encouraged the class to give our all to everything that we did and to never give up no matter how difficult the challenge. She taught us the meaning of grit and determination as she continually reminded the class that nothing is impossible if you try. These simple lessons learned when I was six years old were so impactful to me. Here I, sat, here I sit, nearly 12 years later, remembering her words and putting her advice into action. On the topic of, of advice to incoming freshmen, Marta Waluska offered, no, the guidance counselors are not always in their offices, but they shouldn't be. 
They are not getting paid to sit on a chair and waiting for you to come down with your problems. They have a million responsibilities that are much larger than you wanting to change classes so you can sit with your best friend. Don't complain that you never see them because if you truly need an issue resolved, they will make time to see you and try their best to help you. They spread themselves thin to help manage many important aspects of this school and that should be appreciated. Take the time to make an appointment to see your guidance counselor and make sure you thank them for all they do for you and your school. Finally, Marta shared, teachers all have a common, a common goal to help you succeed. I understand feeling like a teacher is out to, feeling like a teacher is out to get you or simply does not like you, but also understand that it's not true. Entering my junior year, I wanted nothing more than to drop AP language simply for the fact that I had gotten a couple bad grades on essays that I thought I had excelled in. I was sure that Ms. Salerno, who, was, who yes, indeed is amazing, was out to get me and did, what, did not want me to do well in her course. Yet, as the year progressed and my work improved, I suddenly began to understand why she was so hard on me in the beginning. After passing the AP test with flying colors and gaining college credit, I went back to hug her and tell her how much I appreciated her. Teachers only push you so hard and expect so much out of you because they know you have potential. They're trying to get you to push yourself to your limits and comprehend that there are no limits to your knowledge. Listen to your teachers, be nice to them, do what they say, you will thank them one day. When Mrs. Salerno learned of Marta's praise, she said, thank you for taking the time to share a copy of Marta's essay with me. I appreciate it more than you know. It is a perfect way to end the school year and it will give me courage for the next year. I hope that all of the inner borough district teachers, staff and administrators know that they're appreciated and that they feel encouraged to continue to do their best. Your reward will be students like Taylor and Marta reaping the benefit of your good teaching deeds. Sincerely, Margie Evans, Inner Borough High School, Home and School. Thank you, Mr. Evans. Uh, very nice uh, letter to the board there. Uh, moving on to number eight, committee reports. First up, 8.1 finance meeting, Mr. Schiff. Thank you, Mr. Phelps. Uh, the Finance Committee met on Tuesday, June 4th, 2018. We also discussed budget issues at the work session meeting held on Monday, June 18th. The first item discussed was a 1819 preliminary budget. Uh, final budget, I apologize. Mr. High School reviewed the prime, uh, final budget and highlighted the differences compared to the budget from the May meeting. I'm going to highlight some of the information from both the finance and the work session meeting. This month, our budget saw a decrease in its revenue by $145,250. This decrease in revenue is due to adjustments for the State Farm Grant, assessment changes, and the adjustment to the proposed tax increase. We previously were using the figure 3.2% and adjusted it to the 2.95%, which is on the agenda for approval. We did some, find some savings and saw our expenditures decrease by $95,498. Most of the savings came from the salary and benefits line item due to retirements and resignations, some of which are on the agenda for approval this evening. Although we need to fill these positions, they provide a net savings to the district of approximately $90,000. We saw an increase to the bus lease line item by $27,000 because we need to have additional vans for students with IEPs. We also saw a decrease of $281,685 because we reallocated the committed debt service money back into the operating budget. The purpose of this is to stabilize the potential and potentially increase the fund balance. This strategy is aggressive because it will reduce the budget surplus for this year, but however, it can benefit the fund balance in the following fiscal year. All board members believed that this is the most fiscally responsible decision. Overall, our bu uh, budget surplus was reduced from $365,361 to approximately $81,000 with a 2.95% tax increase. The committee and other board members had discussions on where they felt most comfortable with the tax increase. Some board members wanted to go to the index of 3.2% in order to increase the surplus and help the fund balance, while some board members wanted to go as low as 2.8% and break about even with any surplus. A compromise of 2.95% was discussed and placed on the agenda this evening. The proposed 2.95% tax increase will increase the millage rate by 1.0631 mills, and that will generate $1,474,022 for the school district. Much of this money and other savings we found over the last six months is being used to cover increases in, to the salary and line, benefits line item, the special education line item, and the debt service line item. To see a side-by-side -side analysis of last year's budget, 
with this year's budget, please review the handout that was uh, placed at the back of um, the auditorium and it will also be placed on the website. To put the proposed tax increase into real figures for the community, if a house is assessed at $88,000, a 2.95% tax increase would increase your annual tax bill by $94, or about $8 a month. If your house is assessed at $200,000, a 2.95% tax increase would increase your annual tax bill by $213, or about $18 a month. And then if it's somewhere in between, um, it could go lower or higher. The board is aware of the impact that any tax increase has on its residents. Many seniors are on fixed income and a tax increase will, you know, make them have to look deeply at their budgets. We are a community of hardworking people who work day in and day out to provide for our families and do not have much more disposable income. No one likes to raise taxes. Unfortunately, there are many competing factors that we have to deal with, such as maintenance of our facilities, retention of highly qualified personnel, fiscal stability for the district, and um, the quality of education for our students. I would like to thank Mr. Harris and Ms. Joseph and other members of the board for working on this budget over the last couple of months. This is truly a team effort. Mr. High School and Mrs. Riley in a few minutes are going to review um, how the budget will impact this year coming up, how it will impact the district this year. Um, and as I mentioned, the proposed budget um, will be placed, or the final budget will be, if passed tonight, will be placed on the um, website for the public. The second item on the agenda was the preliminary financial statements. Um, all board members had an opportunity to review and ask any questions. The committee adjourned, um, and we will not be holding a finance committee meeting in July. Um, any finance issues that come up will be discussed at the work session meeting. Thank you, Mr. Phelps. Thank you, Mr. Chavone. Now, moving on to 8.2, usually this is Mr. Evans, but I ran the meeting due to he had obligations with some of our students at sporting events. Uh, so the GBO was held on Monday, June 4th, 2018, following the Finance Committee meeting. The Curriculum Department presented the Delaware Valley Consortium for Excellence in Equity the consortium helps to identify gaps in our school system, how to increase parent and family involvement, and support the students more effectively. It provides for various professional development in such areas as leadership for administrators, teacher leaders, youth leadership, supporting support developing school cultures, provides a sympathence, excuse me, on best practices among di districts. It empowers leadership and students to succeed and is on the agenda this evening to be voted on. The Human Resources presented a safe school professional development software pro uh, platform. This gives the district a platform for various professional development and training tools. This software also provides the district the ability to track state requirements more efficiently. This would be provided through a consortium from the DCIU, and this is also open to our entire uh, Interborough staff as well. The Facilities Department gave the board an update on the schedule and the process for the cleaning and maintenance of the buildings for the upcoming school year. Mr. Galloway also gave an update on energy savings while buildings are not being utilized and provide the update on the keying project taking place around the district the meeting adjourned at 8 37 p.m and as the finance we will not be holding a gbo this month uh, we will be addressing any issues at the workshop that's my report uh, moving on to 8.3 a legislative update, Mr. Evans? There is none? No, sir, there is no report. Thank you, Mr. Evans. At 8.4, Delaware County Community College, Mr. Goldsboro? Uh, there hasn't been a meeting uh, uh, since I've been put on the board, so uh, at this time there is no, uh, no report. Thank you, sir. 
I'm moving on to 8.5, Delaware County Intermediate Unit, Mr. Harris. I get the extra time. I'll use up all their extra time. So we're going to go real long here. Whew. Okay, here we go. The Delaware County Intermediate Unit Board of Directors met on July 6, 2018. The Intermediate Unit General Operation Budget for 2018-2019 has been approved by all 15 school districts. 15 school districts have approved the election of the following individuals to serve as members on the Delaware County Intermediate Board of Directors from a term of July 1st, 2018 to June 30th, 2021. Chichester Ed Cardo, Penn Delco, Colleen Powell, Rose Tree Media, Jacqueline Clancy, Upper Darby, Monica Taylor, Wallingford Swarthmore, Kelly Watchman. Approve a partnership agreement with the Head Start for the following districts, collaborating, share students, outcome data and support kindergarten registrations, Interborough School District, yay, and, Ch and Chester Upland School District. Approved DCI contracts with the following, Rose Tree Media School District, Springfield School District, Upper Darby School District, Chester School District, Chichester School District, Upper Darby Ch School District. <sighs> Approved the to perform a 2018-2019 health care insurance premiums with the Delaware County Public Schools Health Insurance Trust at an estimated cost of, ready, Jack, because you're good with the numbers, $7,781,103. For more news and information, please go to DCIU.org. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Harris. Moving on to number nine. Uh, presentation of our proposed final uh, fund budget. Ms. Uh, Bernadette Riley and Martin Haskell. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Phelps. At this time, I would ask the board members to please have a seat uh, in the audience. Thank you. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, I would like to take this opportunity to start off our presentation uh, by thanking the Board of School Directors for their assistance uh, with the administration through this process, uh, especially the Finance Committee, uh, Ms. Joseph, Mr. Harris, and the Finance Chair, uh, Mr. Chavon, um, our directors and administrators. We have been working on this budget. Um, I would say we started this process in October behind the scenes. Um, we have been working diligently as a team to provide a fiscally responsible budget that continues to provide a quality education to our students and also recognizes the burden that any tax increase places on our uh, taxpayers. Uh, as Mr. Chavon stated, um, the budget handout that was given out this evening provides a much more in-depth look at our budget. Um, it will be available on the school district website and we will also have copies uh, a limited number of copies available at the administration building and in uh, and in our buildings. It will be available um, on Monday, and I believe that date is June 25th. Uh, first slide we're going to talk about this evening is how does our district generate um, revenue? If you've sat through our presentations before, we do like to um, flush some of this out with the public because we do think it's important to know where our revenue sources are. Um, that large portion that you see there is our local sources, which it are tax dollars. That's the tax, real estate taxes that we collect um, from our community. Out of that 64 percent, 
90% of it is from the real estate. So that is quite a large amount of money that does support the education programs here in our district. Uh, the state sources, which is about $22 million, that is our basic edu education funding that we receive from the state. Um, it's special education subsidies and transportation. And of um, that very small portion up there that you see, basically that 1%, is our federal sources, which is our federal programs money that we receive, Title I, Title II, and Title IV. How our district is spending money, the largest portion of our budget does go to our salary and our benefits. That's approximately 75 to 80% of our budget. Um, about 20 million goes towards benefits. That's health care. That's our PEASERS cost, our unemployment, and retirement. We do receive um, subsidy back from the state on our PEASERS cost, which is about 50 to 55%. Uh, our instructional costs, which is about 8% of our budget, that is our special ed costs, uh, funds that we pay out to the Delaware County Community College, and cyber school tuition, just to name a few. Um, our support services that you see up there, that's about $3 million. That's our administrative costs and busing. We have our debt service, which is the, um, the amount that the district has accrued for capital projects, so um, the HVAC projects that we have completed over the past um, four to five years, that's the debt service, that is what we use to pay, um, pay for those projects. And if you look up there, that very small number there is the schools, that's our operational amount for each of our schools that they use on a day-to-day -day basis, that pays for supplies, library books, things that they need within their building. So it is a very, very small portion um, that we use to operate the schools. Also, we have there um, our facilities department. That's our water, our gas, our electric, um, sewers, repair work, our maintenance custodians, and our grounds. Um, just want to point out on this, this is our non-fixed and non-contractual expenditures. If you look at the bottom where you'll see that highlighted number, that $4.2 million, 6.21% of the budget, um, that is really the area that Mr. Heiskell and I focus on when we are working on this budget because all the majority of those other costs that we have up there are, are pretty much fixed. Our salaries are fixed based on our contractual obligations. Our benefit costs are fixed. So when we really start to look at how to reduce, reduce the budget, we really look hard at that non-fixed, non-contractual um, expenditures. And you can see that is a very small portion of the entire budget. Um, but that is really the place where we, where we do start to look. Um, where the district, let me go on here for a minute. That'll, oh. um, you know, when we, what drives our budget um, are, as I said earlier, those salary obligations, our contractual obligations, our health care benefits, retirement, our debt, and our special education costs. So, you know, where does the district have the ability to manage and control some of these costs? When we are negotiating contracts, when we are looking at health care, where can we get the best deal or where can we get, um, where can we save money on the benefits and things that we are offering? So we always are shopping around for the best price that we can get. Um, but it is, it is an ongoing process. And again, when we negotiate our contracts, since that makes up such a large portion of our budget, that is where we try and um, control some of our costs. Uh, one of the areas we really focused on this year was um, our fund balance. And as um, I believe Mr. Chavon, you mentioned this, uh, when we completed our audit this year, um, one of the focuses that 
the um, auditing firm wanted us to look at was that we need to start looking at that fund balance and moving moving in the opposite direction. We have slowly been depleting um, that fund balance for a variety of reasons. And we recognize that if we continue to do that, um, we will deplete it completely. And we, as a district, cannot allow that to happen. We need to really start to look to how to increase and get that number back up to about 8% of our budget. And I'm gonna ask Mr. High School to come up and talk a little bit about this. Um, and what the district is looking to do um, to try and address this issue. Good evening, everyone. Um, the slide you see here is status of our fund balance. The three years that are shown in the um, table to the right, those are the audited numbers. Uh, and as you can see, those the, the fund balances have been decreasing each year. Uh, with, with that respect, Standard & Poor's has now changed our district rating from an, an AA- minus to a, an A+. Plus. A+, plus is still good, but it's, it's not obviously as good as an AA-. Uh, this could potentially affect future bond issuance if we need them for, for projects. And <clears throat> what they're doing, proposing tonight is 2.95% uh, increase in taxes, which would generate about $81,000 in surplus. Um, that would help to increase our fund balance if everything stays status quo during the year from budget to actual. So the, the, this needs to be addressed. Uh, we, we are um, needing to increase our fund balance. Point. And it, with that being said, um, there's our, there is a proposal to help increase the fund balance other than just raising the taxes. Basically, uh, we ha when you commit a fund balance, uh, that automatically comes out every year. So what we want proposing to do, based on the auditor's uh, recommendation from the June 30th, 2017 audit, is that we would like to, the proposal with the district would like to do is to take two of the committed items that are going to be remaining for 1819 and 1920. And in 1819, we'd like to, the district would like to take that uncommitted fund balance for the 2015A general obligation bond and move that up into uncommitted and in 2019, 2020, they would, we would like to take the, the leases for the vans and the buses and also move those up to uncommitted. By doing so, uh, this allows the district not to use any unassigned fund balance if we, if we budget status quo every year for budget neutral. Um, it could potentially increase our bond rating if our fund balance does go up, and it, it will uh, we'll follow the recommendation of the auditors as well. Um, there are some, uh, a couple of negatives to this approach. The, the uh, Mrs. Riley, the administration, and the board would have to um, reduce expenditures in other areas as they go through the budget process in future years. And depending on future budgets, uh, the board would would could potentially recommit funds as needed for capital improvements as, as they arise. And this is just an example here of the top section is if we stay the way we are now with the committed fund balance. As you can see, we're, we're going to be going from an actual uh, 5.3 million all the way down to 2.1 million over the next five years. And if we do the uncommitted proposal, you can see we're going to, uh, in, we're going to have a slight decrease, but we, as you can see in 2019, 2020, we started to go back up again. And that's the general idea of, of this proposal is to turn it around so that we are adding to the fund balance as opposed to taking away from it. And as you can see on the bottom of each of those, if we use our proposal, we'll be in five years up to that 6%, uh, which is the 2% uh, less than what the recommend, recommended 8% is from the Department of Ed. If not, we're uh, going to be looking at about a 2% to, at that point. Thank you. <clears throat> So um, options that we consider when we're looking to balance the budget. Of course, the contracts um, to ensure that they are fiscally beneficial to both parties. Um, reducing, restructuring, eliminating programs, services, and staff. And uh, I am very pleased to announce that this year we are not having to do any of that. Um, for the past three years, we have had to look very, um, very, very much at our staffing, 
programs and we've had to restructure in a variety of subject areas, but this year we do not have to do that and that is um, an accomplishment for us. The last thing we want to do is reduce any types of programs or services for our students. So, um, you know, I'm very proud of the work that we have done in that area. Uh, defer capital improvements. Um, the district has spent um, close to $35 million on renovating um, our infrastructure, HVAC. So that is that was our project at the time. Um, the board is consistently, constantly looking at how we can make improvements. Um, but right now, you know, looking at big projects is something we just kind of have to hold the line on right now and focus on increasing that fund balance. And of course, as I stated, um, you know, increasing the tax. This is mainly uh, informational. Uh, if with the 2.95% tax increase, you'll see about $1.5 million generated in real estate tax revenue from last year to this year. Uh, the, the right just kind of shows you uh, the, the current year where the uh, millage rates are for each district in the, in the county. And uh, on the left, it just kind of gives you a history of um, the tax increases over the last uh, 10 years for the Interboro School District. The, the tax increase uh, and how this would impact you, the assessment, average assessment value according to the county as of uh, June of this year, it's about $88,000. So if you're in the, the average assessment, your increase would be about $94. And as you can see, from $70,000, it would be $74 all the way up to $200,000 would be $213 uh, increase per year. Some of our proposed uh, staffing for next year, uh, we will be adding in a college career counselor to, to support students in grade grades 6 through 12. This is being paid through ready to learn funds. Uh, we are proposing an autistic support teacher at Prospect, Port, Port, Prospect Park School to continue uh, to support the continuum of services that we are providing to students as they transition from the elementary into the middle school. Uh, we're adding in hoping to approve a behavioral specialist um, that will work throughout the district for our students that have um, emotional and social needs. We are looking at adding two additional paraprofessionals to support uh, tiered interventions within our um, for math and that's also being covered paid for through ready to learn grants and we are also um, requesting a 0.5 access coordinator and that's to assist parents and families who are looking to obtain access services through Medicare the district um, through this process will receive revenue back um, which helps provide uh, services to students um, who are who have access so we're hoping to um, build upon that position in the future Some of our other proposed highlights for 18-19, um, we have an, a variety of professional development for next year. We are looking to um, approve the membership to the Delaware Valley Consortium for Excellence and Equity. We'll be paying for that through Title II funds. Uh, the right tools, which is for our first through fifth grade regular and special education students, that's being paid for through Title I. Um, we are continuing our differentiated instruction work. Um, with our ninth and 10th grade teachers, and we are bringing in Jimmy Casas to work with our staff on professional development and his focuses on culture, school culture, um, and we're excited to have him uh, coming to the school district. Safety and security, uh, we are working with a consultant who is um, finishing up evaluations of all of our buildings, and we are in the process of ex doing the uh, exterior rekaying. Uh, I did want to point out that I, um, if anyone saw the Daily Times today, um, there was an article on the PA budget plan, which includes more funding for schools um, in the area of school safety. So hopefully um, we will see that happen and the district will be able to utilize those funds to continue to enhance uh, the security and safety around the district. So we'll be following that piece uh, very closely. Uh, also, we are working on um, completing our collaborative spaces in all of our community schools. That was funded through our Boeing grant and also through Ready to Learn. 
and we are getting to the point where we are completing our aquaponics classroom, which was also funded through a state farm grant. So I think up here you will see that we do really utilize um, our federal programs money and our grant money to the best of our ability and ensure that we are really choosing good professional, develop, professional development and um, you know, that we are getting the most that we can for, for those funds. As far as grants for next year, uh, we have applied for the pre-K count grant through the state. Um, for We are looking to add another classroom. So we would have our classroom at the high school, which we just completed our first year very successfully. And we're looking to add another classroom at the Kindergarten Academy. That is a five-year grant. Each year is about $289,000 with a total at the end of five years about 1.45. We're very excited about that pre-K class. And uh, one of the things that we will, we will be doing this year is really looking and monitoring the data of those children that attended our pre-K program and are now moving into our kindergarten program. So that's really going to be a focus for us this year, and uh, we will be sharing that out. Um, unfortunately, if we do not receive the funding for the pre-K count, um, we will still be able to maintain the program at the high school, and that will be paid for through Ready to Learn. Uh, and last, we did put in for another Boeing grant. Um, this one is entitled collaborative, it's a collaborative learning commons. This is for the high school and it's designing spaces to create STEM career and college connections for $125,000 and that will focus on the library area here at the high school. This is um, actually these numbers came out this uh, this morning from Harrisburg. Right, they are deliberating um, this week, and they hope to, to finalize their budget and have it adopted by June 30th of, of 2018. Um, these are some of the um, areas here that will affect the Interborough School District with the with the budget. Uh, the basic ad funding, uh, the governor is looking to increase that by 100 million dollars. That would give a 6.1 million dollar budget. For basic education for the for the whole state, of of that increase, we would see about one hundred and sixty one thousand uh, dollars, very small in the grand scheme of things. And our our uh, basic ed funding budget that would be in the budget tonight is is approximately nine million dollars. The other area that he's proposing uh, for an increase is special ed funding. Uh, it was twenty million, now it's fifteen million. Uh, of that fifteen million, uh, we we would see an increase of about a hundred thousand dollars. The budget in the state is 1.1 million, or I'm sorry, excuse me, 1.1 billion, and of that, about 2.3 million is ours. Uh, the proposed increase in the pre-K counts funding is at 20 million, and that's results in a, a funding of 192 million statewide. Of that, uh, 192 million, the district here would see about 289 thousand dollars of that if it, if uh, we are approved for that grant. Uh, the proposed uh, ready to learn. Budget is about 268 million, of which we see about 555 thousand dollars. So, as you can see, we're, we're a very small percentage. Every every one of those uh, that we have is about less than one percent of the total this total state budget. So, um, we do rely on state funding, but unfortunately, that's not going to get it done. Uh, as taxpayers, um, you know, I always do put this slide in here because our, our legislators, are, we are fortunate that we have legislators who do support public education. And there are times when there are critical bills um, that are going through the House and the Senate that do have a financial effect on the district. Um, the board does take those opportunities to inform the public and at times we do ask for the public to contact their local legislators. So if you look at our website, we do have that information up there. Um, it's always good to try and keep up on what's going on up in Harrisburg. Um, but to be honest, things do move slowly there at times. But we do monitor it very closely. Um, uh, there, It was mentioned tonight that we do have a legislative um, council that happens at the Delaware County Intermediate Unit once a month. 
and we do receive a lot of important information there. Plus, we do get a lot of emails that do come through on what is happening in Harrisburg. So we do try and monitor that very closely because it does have an impact um, on the decisions that we make. Uh, and that is our budget presentation for this year. Um, again, I would just like to thank everyone for their support of this process. Um, it is an ongoing, um, it's just ongoing throughout the majority of the year. And um, we really do keep in mind the burden that this does place on taxpayers. And we could not do this. The administrative team would not be able to do this without the support of the board. So I really need to do, thank each and every one of you for your input that you give us. We really do listen to you and it does have an impact on the decisions that we make. So thank you so much for all your support. Um, we are available to answer any questions that anyone might have after the meeting. Of course, we will be here. All of these documents, the handout from this evening, and um, the budget presentation will be available on our website as of Monday, and we will have some handouts placed in all of the buildings and at the administration building for anyone who might want to pick one up. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Riley and uh, Mr. High School for that uh, presentation. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Mr. Chavon and the rest of the Finance Committee. Uh, they worked tires tirelessly on this budget. As Mr. Kelly, uh, as uh, someone stated earlier, this month is a hard month. You know, every year trying to get this budget done and trying to make everything fit and work and so it's not an easy task uh the entire board works on it but um the finance committee really puts her time in as well as mr high school and miss riley they work tireless hours on this so we do appreciate it thank you okay uh Moving on to uh, number uh, number 10. Motion that the Board of School Directors adopts the attached final general fund budget for the fiscal year July 1, 2018 to June 30, 2019 with proposed expenditures of $67,815,989 requiring an increase of 1.0631 mills over the current millage rate resulting in a tax increase of 2.95% for a new total millage rate of 37.1008 mills. Second. This motion has been moved and seconded. Are there any questions or comments from the board? Comment? Uh, yes, Mr. Evans. It, it might not be the appropriate place to comment on this, but first I'd like to thank the superintendent and Mr. High School uh, for all their creative efforts in getting us to this point. Um, it's a good thing that if the state does pass their budget that although it's only in minuscule amounts, all our amounts go up a little bit uh, rather than going down, which is a good thing. I don't, I don't find, you know, in looking at the pie charts that the superintendent put up, I don't find anything but uh, creative management of the existing available funds. Uh, and I appreciate all the effort that the entire administrative staff puts out in order to try and get all this stuff done for our students in, with, the, with the amount of money we do have. Um, so I just wanted to thank them for that. Thank you, Mr. Evans. Any other comments? 
Hearing none, uh, Ms. Caldwell, could we have a roll call on this, please? Ms. Alonzo Lorenzo? Abstain from the vote. Mr. Goldsboro? Yes. Ms. Fericchio? No. Ms. Joseph? Ms. Bernauer? Yes. Mr. Harris? No. Mr. Evans? Yes. Mr. Chavone? Yes. Mr. Phelps? Yes. The motion carries six to two with one abstention. Moving on to number 11, personnel, Mr. Evans. Motion that the following personnel actions be approved, starting with 11.1 .1 on page 2 and going to 11.22 on page 8. Second. Motions have been moved and seconded. Are there any questions or comments from the board? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motions carry 9-0. Next motion, Mr. Evans. Motion with regret that the following retirements be accepted. Mon number 12.1, Christine Wallace, French teacher with five years of service to the district be approved for retirement, effective June 14, 2018, under the terms and con conditions set forth in the current agreement with the Interborough Education Association. Second. Motion has been moved and seconded. Are there any questions or comments from the board? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 9-0. Next motion, Mr. Evans. Motion 12.2, Patricia Reeps, custodian of Norwood School with five years of service to the district, be approved for retirement, effective July 6, 2018. Second. Motion has been moved and seconded. Are there any questions or comments from the board? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 9-0. Next motion, Mr. Evans. From the Office of Cur Curriculum and Instruction, motion 13.1 on page 8 to, no to motion 13.19 on page 10. Second. Motions. Motions have been moved and seconded. Are there any questions or comments from the board? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motions carry 9-0. Next motion, Mr. Evans. Motion 14 from the Office of Special Education Pupil Services. Uh, motion that the following items be approved 14.1 14, 14 to 14.6. Second. Motions have been moved and seconded. Are there any questions or comments from the board? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motions carry 9-0. Next motion, Mr. Evans. Motion 15 from the Office of Technology, motion 15.1 and 15.2. Second. Motions have been moved and seconded. Are there any questions or comments from the board? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motions carry 9-0. Next motion, Mr. Evans. From the Office of Facilities, motion the following items be approved, 16.1 to 16.4. Second. Motions have been moved and seconded. Are there any questions or comments from the board? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motions carry 9-0. Next motion, Mr. Evans. From the Office of Finance, motion 17.1 to 17.5. Second. Motions have been moved and seconded. Are there any questions or comments from the board? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motions carry 9-0. Next motion, Mr. Evans. Motion 18, that the Board of School Directors approve the contract with Scenario Learning to provide a software platform for employee professional development for various state required trainings effective July 1, 2018 through June 30th, 2019 at a total cost not to exceed $3,200 to be paid from district funds. Second. Motion has been moved and seconded. Are there any questions or comments from the board? 
Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 9-0. Next motion, Mr. Motion 19 is a roll call motion. Motion that the Board of School Directors approve a, quice, a, a price quote from Bedford Freeman and Worth for the purchase of high school environmental science AP test, textbooks with a six use license to the Launchpad platform at a cost not to exceed $5,977.61 to be paid from the Ready to Learn grant funds. Second. Motion has been moved and seconded. Are there any questions or comments from the board? Hearing none, Ms. Caldwell, could we have a roll call, please? Ms. Alonso Lorenzo? Yes. Mr. Goldsboro? Yes. Ms. Verricchio? Yes. Ms. Joseph? Yes. Ms. Bernauer? Yes. Mr. Harris? Yes. Mr. Evans? Yes. Mr. Chavone? Yes. Mr. Phelps? Yes. Motion carries 9-0. Uh, is there any old business? Hearing none, is there any new business? Hearing none, can we have uh, comments from our superintendent? Thank you, Mr. Phelps. Uh, summer is upon us. Uh, there is lots of good information for parents on our website regarding summer reading and math requirements. So I would ask parents if they have any questions about that to please check out our website or you can call um, the building administrators and they can also provide you with some information. We also have packets available in the vestibule of the administration building. As soon as you come in, there's a table on the right and there are folders that have packets for students from grades first through 12. So if you need any assistance with that, again, you can stop by the administration building or call your uh, building administrator. Summer registration, re-registration is also taking place. Um, there's information on our website about that. We're also doing residency verification. Um, it's very busy. I would strongly recommend to parents that if you are able to come in here during the months of June and July, I would recommend that you do that. It gets very crowded in August and to ensure that your child is able to start on the first day of school. If you are able to get in here, please do so. We do have evening hours available as well. And finally, on behalf of the administration, I would like to wish everyone a safe, relaxing summer. And um, we are putting stuff out on Twitter. So if you're on there, please follow us. And uh, we'll see you in a few months. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Riley. Is there any uh, comments from our board members? Comment. Uh, Mr. Wait. Evan, or Mr. Harris. Thank you. I would like to welcome Mrs. Ms. Christine Alonzo to the board. This was a very tough for the board, this is the first time since I was appointed that we've had more than one qualified candidate for the appointment. We appreciate each candidate's interest in serving the school and the community and hope that they continue to do so. Thank you, Mr. Harris. Is there any other comments from the board? Comment? Mr. Evans. Just wanted to uh, refer back to some of the public comments regarding uh, first the election of the new uh, board member. Uh, we did our very best to follow the solicitor's requirement and recommendations and the requirements of the law for um, transparency, a right to know, and sunshine laws. So we, we did our best to conduct the interviews in public, which we did, um, and the nominations here tonight uh, as, as recommended by our counselor. Um, there was never any attempt, uh, while it might not be the same uh, form and format that it has been in the past, uh, we we're simply doing what was recommended by our solicitor. Uh, so that's that part of it. As far as the comment regarding the ongoing airport agreement, um, I, may, I may be mistaken about parts of that agreement. I may be... Uh, I may have a lack of knowledge or understanding about uh, certain uh, charges or, and, and if I mentioned that we had to pay to the solicitor, I, I could certainly be mistaken and I never worry or uh, never take offense with somebody questioning my knowledge or background or experience. But 
I do, I do take umbrage with somebody questioning my integrity. I'm never, never going to be dishonest deliberately. I'm never going to try and uh, any shenanigans or, or anything like that uh, in matters of the school board. So that said, as a single board member, uh, as I've said in the past, I will never act unilaterally outside the will of the board, and the will of the board has already been expressed in this matter that there is no further action for us to take. That said, uh, I hope that uh, I hope you guys all have a good summer. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Evans. Is there any other comments from any other board members? Myself again. Uh, Ms. Uh, Lorenzo, or Alonzo Lorenzo, I'm sorry, I'm, I'll get it by the next meeting, I promise. Um, welcome to the board, and we appreciate, again, your time and service. And uh, as, as we do, appreciate all of you up here. I mean, all of you spend your time up here tirelessly, thanklessly, and uh, I, I, I will... Uh, say I think each and every one of you bring a lot to this board and we do appreciate it. Uh, hearing no comment, other... Comment, comment, comment. Uh, Sorry. I, I am remiss in not, also not welcoming, welcoming you to the board. I'm sure you'll do a great job. Thank you for putting yourself out there and be, being willing to dedicate the time. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Evans. Uh, hearing no other comments, the next work session of the Interborough Board of School Directors will be convened in the boardroom of the administration building on Monday, July 16th, 2018 at 7 p.m. The next regularly monthly public meeting of the Interborough Board of School Directors will be conveyed in the boardroom of the administration building on Wednesday, July 18th, 2018 at 7 p.m. Thank you all and have a great summer.